Welcome back. So in the last video, we were talking about how we visualize distributions of data using histograms and density plots. In this video, we're going to follow on on that topic and think about how we visualize multiple distributions together in order to compare uh, data sets. So here is that same uh, data set we were looking at before, which was a distribution of uh, age data from the Titanic. And now we have that data broken out into uh, both uh, male and female gender for that data. And this is this initial visualization we're looking at now is called a stacked histogram where we, you know, we draw you know, the, the histogram of the, the male data and then we draw the histogram of the female data and literally put those bars on top of the first set of bars in a different color. This uh, stacked histogram is kind of has, you know, the advantage of you know, the, the overall histogram is the histogram of the overall data, so we can see that in the overall curve. We can easily see uh, the first set of bars that are pl plotted and understand them. Um, and it has a distinct disadvantage, though, uh, that it's harder to judge uh, size within the second or third or fourth or however many different uh, groups you're stacking on top of each other it gets progressively harder and harder to actually see the shape of that distribution uh, for these other um, distant, uh, other groups. So, uh, you, know, it's, it's, you know, you look at the red female data and it's really kind of hard to figure out what the shape of that distribution actually is. The other uh, disadvantage of stacked histograms is they uh, can easily be confused with overlapping histograms, which are, are the next thing I want to talk about. So, Overlapping histograms are, are they're like stacked histograms, but now instead of stacking uh, densities on top of each other, we're going to literally plot them on top of each other. But we're going to set the transparency uh, on the bar so that we can see the, the other bars underneath. Um, so this has the you know somewhat obvious disadvantage that you know, if stacked histograms are confused with overlapping histograms, overlapping histograms can be confused with stacked histograms. Um, I do think in general they are easier to understand um, than this stack version. So if you have to go with two, I, I would go with this one, with one of the two. Uh, but you know, it uh, is worth noting that because of the way that you're overlapping colors using transparencies, it can create uh, essentially new colors. And so when, if you, when you first look at this graph, you don't actually necessarily see two colors, red and blue. You, you kind of see three because you see you know, the, the area where they're overlapping and then the area you know, where you just see red and the area where you just see blue. Um, and so that can often cause confusion because people, it, you can take time to kind of visually parse out what's going on. You have to check the, um, the legend in detail. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's, I would say it's better than a stacked histogram, but it's, it's not necessarily the best way uh, to, to visualize kind of overlapping data. Uh, we can also do overlapping density plots. Uh, while the overlapping <laughs> histograms tend to be uh, a little confusing, the overlapping densities, I would say, tend to be a, a better option if you're okay with kind of smoothing your data a little bit through density. And I think it's, it's been argued that it's because you know, the, the visual line of the edge of the histogram connects the points together much more cleanly, and it's easier to see how they're connected. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's easier to interpret that these are two densities plotted on, on top of each other. So if, you were, if you're going to overlap, uh, if you're going to visualize multiple distributions simultaneously, uh, densities tend to work better uh, than, than histograms. And they also will tend to scale well uh, to moderate numbers of distributions. So this now is looking at uh, distributions of, of butter fat content within different types of of cow milk, um, and you know, we're here and I able to see four different overlapping distributions, and it's still fairly visually easy uh, to tell them apart. That said, you can't take this to really high dimensions. Uh, that said, there are some other creative ways to consider visualizing multiple distributions uh, simultaneously. Um, here's an example um, where instead of uh, visualizing the male and female on top of each other, uh, it visualizes the male and the female separately but also provides the overall histogram of all passengers combined so that it kind of makes it easier 
uh, to compare the distribution of any one data set to the overall data distribution. And this kind of approach could scale to more than two uh, distributions. Another thing that works uh, well for two distributions but doesn't really scale uh, to multiple distributions is to actually visualize your histogram sideways and just plot them in, in opposite directions. So here we have the, the male data and the female data. They're both clearly plotted and they're not, they're not visually overlapping at all. And the color I think usually makes it fairly just clear which one is which. So, so it can be um, you know, often easier for comparison. And the other nice thing is uh, you, know, you, you would think that it would be harder to compare you know, you know, is the male data and the female data the same or bigger or smaller? But actually, you know, the human brain is pretty good at judging lengths and, and midpoints. So this, this actually works uh, pretty good, these kind of uh, vertical histogram, these horizontal histograms. Um, but again, it's not going to scale kind of beyond two distributions. Cool. So uh, for the next set of slides, I'm going to pivot to thinking about how we go think about not just hist histograms and densities, but thinking of how we visualize uncertainties more broadly using a broader range of, of approaches.